to look at how we look at people's health, how we treat illnesses, how people can continue to work, how they are part of the wider society and the economy, how we pay for what we need to do, and how we transfer all our thoughts onto this new population pattern, because we need to. We're talking here at the Engaged Aging Summit about the fact that we're living longer now, but maybe not living better as we get older. So really we're very focused on what can we do to help change that trajectory, keep people enjoying their later years more. Aging is a mega trend that's going to have as much impact as digital disruption does today. Aging as well is the biggest as yet unmet need that society has. So I'm super excited that we have the opportunity really talking to each other, making those new connections, thinking in new ways to come up with some meaningful new, hopefully, solutions to create ageing more of a society asset rather than a cost burden. If you don't collaborate kind of across the spectrum of healthcare providers and consumer product goods and services, there's no way to get, get to your goals. You, you have to collaborate. No, no one entity or an individual can solve these problems on their own. I cite an example of you know, the walker. We all know it's terribly designed. It's awful. It's a stigma attached to it. But yet we don't come up with anything different, you know. So why aren't we really starting to partner and find ways that we can actually scale some of these things that, whether it's a walker or a hospital gown, that we know is wrong, that could be better. Um, and so I'm excited about some of these relationships uh, that hopefully maybe get some of those things to happen. We're an interconnected global society, and so thinking about globally, what does aging mean, given that we are all now connected, how does that bring the network of networks sort of together at a different level, I think is the final place that we need to go with it. If we don't work together and as we go forward, aging is gonna be an issue that we all have to deal with. And to age better and to live longer, I think, is everyone's goal. But we can't do it with one industry versus another. It has to be a full collaboration in order to drive better outcomes for everybody. Revising policies and really changing the way that even state and city governments look at different ways of connecting those communities through whether it's transportation or just giving them the additional option to have better health care, to access better health care, and to access their social well-being as well. That's a big piece that has been a very huge theme that we've seen here, um, is really increasing that social awareness, especially for the elderly population, giving them a re sense of purpose. And by combining the public and private sectors with the knowledge base on each and the technologies with each, uh, you know, it's going to be a it's going to be a huge win for everyone. What we're finding with our, our insurance clients is they're trying to engage more convergence with other sectors. They're trying to link closer with health providers, with governments, and actually with consumer product companies as well, trying to help understand and get behind some of the behavioural change. And ageing becomes pretty critical, because if we can identify stages in ageing, people can get help and support, and save them going into hospital and spending costs, getting them out of hospital, into care homes, and support before they might get ill again, and more and more costs are paid on claims. So it's really an economic advantage for insurers to get this sorted, yeah? I typically work with scientists and with clinicians, so we stay in a fairly narrow realm, but we know this is really about systems, and so bringing together all of the different kinds of individuals that you have here from their different backgrounds, I think is gonna be really valuable. I would like to people to go away here with confidence that we're on the right track so our technology, which is really our latest and probably most um, powerful tool, or set of tools, will be used to give us the answers we need to make ageing a positive thing in all the world. Perhaps the greatest success of this day is putting ageing on the agenda as a positive opportunity. Not just as a new market, but as a new lifestyle and a call to innovate, not just in the United States, but globally. I hope to be living a full life. Um, I want to be engaged and active and um, using my mind and still learning. You know, um, I actually recently lost uh, an aunt, an uh, 88 year old aunt, and at the funeral, one of the things I really loved about it is they talked about her as a lifelong learner, and that's something I hope to be doing today and when I'm 90. 
<laughs> when 90 is the new 40, I will for sure be in a lift. Um, however, I'll likely be in an autonomous vehicle, uh, driving around, hopefully at that point flying and just visiting friends and traveling. I hope frankly to continue working, having my family and new friends and old friends around, but maybe 90 won't be the new 40. Maybe we need to invent a new 90. I hope to be on my fourth or fifth career and perhaps uh, finally getting around to running that marathon. Well, I hope to be water skiing. I hope to be, I hope to be, uh, well, I'll be flying my private car through the sky with my auto autonomous vehicle, which has no car insurance. Yeah? Uh, I'll be flying that around between, between where I want to go to for my great grandchildren. Yeah? And also, because I'll be 90 and I'll be near 40, my parents will still be there. Yeah? And because of all the care that they've taken and have invested in over the years.